What's poppin', man? You know what time it is. Your boy, Mr. J Hill. Uh, first and foremost, I want to say welcome back. Um, let's get this straight. I ain't do this shit in a little while now. Um, shout out to my guy, to my guy Taz, Cannon Boy Films. Joseph D. Friend is here. My guy's behind the camera. I always want to show them love. But um, Juanito, what up, dog? What's going on, big dog? How are you? I'm blessed, man. You, so, like I was saying before, um, you got a different J on this one. Because usually I come down with the, the sweatpants. Like, I don't care. You know what I'm saying? If I don't know something then the audience is going to find out, yeah, right? Indeed. This time around, I was I wanted to do some research because I right. thought I definitely respect your brand and I right. respect you as a man we met not too long ago. So um, I just wanted to come a little prepared. And some things sure. I probably don't know still. Not for we sure. Gonna, we I'll get enlighten you on that. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. And I, I definitely wanted to get you something to drink. I mean... Nah, I greatly appreciate you. It's better. It ain't like nah, the gold bottle or nothing. But you know what I'm saying? saying? It's something. <laughs> it's something. It's going to get us right on this yeah, yeah, Sunday. Yeah, yeah, appreciate yeah. you, boss, man. Yeah, it's cool. It's cool. Yeah, right. of course, of course. So, um... Tell us real quick. Appreciate so, that. So, to the good life. I ain't gonna rush it, but, uh... So, preparing myself for an interview, I was I was like, how do I interview an artist? I think you're, like, the first artist I've interviewed, because I feel like artists, poets, you you guys are all unique in your own way. Like, you think different. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, it was like, I wonder how do I interview them. Um, I was looking at a few people. Like, well... Think Kwan, he's regular just like me. Right, right. Like a real nigga. Like, right. okay, son. Like I said, like, real nigga. So I was looking no, at your we'll Instagram, fact. and I, um, what stood out to me the most before we get into the art, right? Right. Is the fact that you scroll down, you kind of see the process, honestly. Right. It's kind of like a book. So it's like, if you go down to your earlier pitches, you still got pitches that you getting like 60 likes, 100 likes. Nice, nice. And, I, and my first thing that came to mind is like, all right, so when did, and I see you cook. Yeah. When did it pop for you? Like, I want to be an artist. I want to paint shoes. I want to paint clothes. Honestly, it probably popped in my head. Um, I want to say about like four and a half, five years ago now. Like this year, making about five years. Okay. Um, but I mean, I always knew that I wanted to get involved with something in relation to fashion, sneakers, you know, anything of that nature. Mm -hmm. um, just because I was always infatuated with just like having, you know, dope sneakers. And, right. You know, uh, always just being, you know, different, obviously, uh, trying to find ways to, you know, brand myself, um, as well as just, you know, being myself at the same time and not having to, you know, convert to being someone else and trying to duplicate what they're doing. Mm -hmm. um, just pretty much just trying to find my personal niche. Right. Um, but I mean, I got a long, you know, background in terms of where that all stems from too, like uh, going to college. You know what I mean? I went to college for, you know, fashion merchandising. Mm. So I do have a bachelor's in um, fashion merchandising. It's a fine arts, a fashion, uh, fine arts degree, actually. Mm -hmm. um, but I graduated from Miami International University of Art and Design uh, back in 2011. Mm -hmm. So, like, them times I was literally, like, you know, just retail driven. You know what I mean? Like, focused on working for different retail companies. Um, you know, getting into... Uh, Pretty much just trying to find, like, you know, how can I, you know, secure a job, leaving college or whatever the case was. For me at that point in time, uh, I was just always thinking, like, you know, go corporate route, corporate route, corporate route, based on whatever we were told, you know, in college and, you know, based on some of my professors, like, pushing certain things, you know, and instilling certain things in us um, early on, mm -hmm. you know, to kind of prepare us for, you know, later on. But, again, I knew that I didn't want to work, you know, for anybody in particular, like, I was just honestly tired of a nine to five lifestyle. When do you think? Because I feel like this is a new thing, right? Like this whole entrepreneurship. And I don't want to say when I say new, I, last ten years, I guess we can say that, right? So like, especially it's heavy with the millennials. Yeah. I feel like when it. When do you think that transition happened from? You know, we was growing up. It's like go to college, get your yeah. degree, get a job. Yeah. Now it was like everybody. It's kind of like having a job is a bad thing, right? And now yeah. don't want to tell nobody that because it's not. Right. Get your bag, however you <laughs> right. want to get your right. bag, right. Right. but. When do you think that transition from, okay, go to college, get a degree, get a good job, to, okay, build my own brand, make it myself and be this entrepreneur? When do you think that transition hit? Or for you, anyway, did it? I mean, honestly, like, for other people, I'm not, I couldn't really state or put my hand, like, my finger on that to say, okay, this is when they transition, you know, for them. Mm -hmm. um, I've seen, you know, people go through certain transitions. Um, but myself, personally, I got to that point where it was just like, uh, I want to say back in like 2013, mm -hmm. when I was working retail, obviously. I was working at Saks at that point in time, Okay. Uh, right there in Friendship Heights. I was um, a visual merchandiser at that point in time, uh, which I had to be at work at like 6 o'clock in the morning, 
And I was commuting from Bellsville all the way to Friendship Heights. And at that okay. point in time, I didn't have a vehicle. So Jeez, it was just like hard. anything that I had to do, you know, to get to the money, like I was just doing it. Like, and I worked that job for at least a good solid year and a half going on two. Um, I even transferred to the store in Bell Harbor. Mm. And I worked out there for about roughly four to five months, if I'm not mistaken, and came back home. Um, and then worked here at the store for about another six months before they actually terminated me because I didn't go to work for like three days. I just, at that point, I didn't really care. Right. Um, Cause I already in my mind, I already had it made up. Like you're going to work every day, like working based off retail, working sales. You got to deal with, you know, people returning, you know, product mm -hmm. uh, that comes, you know, typically out of your paycheck. Um, in which, you know, you can't really budget yourself at all times, you know, when it comes to just having to deal with the retail environment. Now, in terms of people going to college for anything else, um, being a, a lawyer, obviously a doctor, you know, you're going for IT, uh, something more so, you know, substantial where you can actually uh, monetize off of that, you know, coming out of college. Uh, that makes more sense. You know what I'm saying? If that's what your, your goal is and that's what you're driven to do, by all means, you know what I mean? Take that route and, and go to college, actually get a nine to five, a corporate job that can fit, you know, or suit your need more so as a person. Um, as an artist, I just feel like it was just time for me to just jump out there and take that leap of faith. Right. You know what I mean? Now I get it because like, well, um, it's just crazy because like my goal was, when I was a kid, I wanted to play football. Like, I wanted to play sports. So like that was my whole thing. And then right. um, I guess once I got kicked out of school, that's when I was like, I want to be a host or whatever. And like, that's when I, um, it made me host. So, uh, but my thing is, I'm sorry for the noise. Nah, it's, it's all good. It's, it's all good. But uh, we, it's candid. I, I tell all, out, yeah, you know we only have to, though. It's all a part of it. It's all a part of it. But now, nah, um, so like, first of all, you're a man of many talents, right? Because you can yeah. cook. And I'm like, this, this guy cook. You sell, were you selling dinners before you yeah. Before you started paying? Yeah, that was a crazy thing. Well, see, like, I was always cooking, obviously, because I grew up in a Caribbean household, so... You Jamaican? Yeah, Jamaican and Panamanian. Okay. So, like, I grew up, obviously, like, with my moms and, and them for, like, the first few years of my life, and then I had moved with my dad, and that side is just strictly Jamaican. Right. So, like, me growing up with my grandparents, like, my grandmother was always in the kitchen. So it's just like days when I would get in trouble and couldn't go outside. It's like, all right, but let me just go help Grams out in the kitchen type vibe. And then you and then started from that, I just started learning based off everything that she could do. You know what I mean? Like, and she always just told me, like, you know, one thing you got to learn how to do in life is just fend for yourself, mm. which is, you know, cooking, cleaning, doing your laundry, ironing, the whole nine. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I was doing that type of stuff at an early age, um, very early age at that. So once I got older, honestly, and I kind of went off to college at 18. Um, it was just like I didn't have no choice. Right. But to start doing these things for myself um, on a day-to-day -day basis. And then again, it was like when I came home, just like, yo, I got to get to this bread. You know, once I, you know, obviously got terminated from that job, I was just like, you know what, I, that was a good thing for me because it kind of pushed me to do exactly what I always envisioned myself doing. You know what I mean? I just didn't really have a set niche. Mm -hmm. So I was really kind of all over the place just trying to wing it at that point. Um, and just trying to figure out, you know, what my my personal, you know, uh, this, path was, right. you know, in life. You know, so was you, this, my thing is like, all right, you got terminated, then you started cooking to like make money on the side? Nah, I was just always cooking. You and just always, I was just always putting it up on like IG. And so you weren't like selling that. it? Nah. Like, oh shit, I'm thinking nah, you were selling it. I wasn't selling it at that time. And then I started selling it roughly around the time when I started dealing with the, the clothes and the sneakers. Okay, all right. Um, because again, it was just more so about bringing in bread. Makes sense, you know, makes as sense. As opposed to trying to, trying to run it like a business, you I know what I'm saying? It. Like, I ain't really care about the business aspect. I was just trying to get, get to the bread, dollar. you know what I'm saying? So, um, again, it was just doing that. And then um, it started working out because again, I would cook the food and again, presentation, you know what I'm saying? Very important. Man, I ain't gonna lie, see, because like, I'm. Uh, entrepreneur as well is like there's so many questions but i'm trying to stay on task so nah, it's like so we're talking about retail and i want to get into i want to get into i want to i want to jump straight into like when you started you know what i'm saying and like yeah. what you was doing first yeah. your motivation behind it but then it's like we're talking money and it's like i want people to understand how important it is to even because a lot of us say we don't care about money right or, nah, i mean we we all say that yeah but we need know? it and it's important and financial literacy and everything is important i want to sure. i want i kind of want to talk about that about like when you like, right, I'm gonna get this bag. I don't care about the business, but I, I want to get this bag, and I'm assuming that helped you still. Yeah, you... of course, because financially, I was able to, you know, invest in certain things that I didn't have prior. Right. You know what I mean? Like as far as um, just even 
like doing the shoes for a second. Like I even the first pair of shoes was a pair of Pumas, mm -hmm. and all I did to those was like take some paint that I had bought out of Target. Mm -hmm. Like I didn't even know what type of paint to use, no none of that. Like I didn't even know what I was doing at that point in time, and I just went and bought like a few colors that I seen in like the arts and crafts section in there. And like these colors look pretty sweet. Let me just go ahead and take these. I'm gonna just do it a pair to, to my personal shoe. Um, and I had actually posted it. When I posted it, everybody was like, like the comments was actually lit. So I'm right. like, and them times, you know, you get a little 20 comments, you nah. think your page booming. Shit, you know what I'm saying? them times like, you get 20 comments, you is booming. You shit, know what I'm saying? This is years ago. We get out, we was trying to get 100 <laughs> likes back then. You know what I'm saying? So if you break anything over 100, like, you, Gucci, you like. know, in your mind, it's like, all right, cool, I'm doing something right. So my boy, I ended up selling it to him for like a buck 10 or something like that. And then mm -hmm. from that point on, I went and bought like, two, three more pairs. Cause they were on, I had caught the kicks on sale for maybe like 30, $45 a pop. So what do you say to those who say, it ain't about the money, I just do it because I love it? I mean, technically, I mean, ultimately you're supposed to do it because you love it, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? But obviously like the ultimate goal is to have some sort of financial gain, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Or to obtain some sort of financial gain in that aspect because Without the money, how do you keep the business rolling? So how you different, differentiate that? Because, like, honestly, sometimes if I catch myself, I, I'm actually asking right. it for myself. Because, nah, like, cool. a lot of times you'll, you, you'll fuck with somebody or you'll do it for the right. love, right? Right. So it's like, I love this, so I, it won't hurt me to do it because I love it anyway, right? Nah, but then you also need the bread because the bread pays your bills. Facts. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? And that's what I be trying to tell myself. I be looking out for certain people and then... I get screwed in the end, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And, and, and again, the masses don't see that, you know what I mean? Like, they don't see when, you know, certain clients try to get over or, you know, if I send a shoe out and then they go to PayPal and then state that they never re re received the shoes, you know what I mean? Like, little stuff like that where I, I end up taking that L. Even with this Cash um, App shit, nigga, niggas is doing refunds on Cash App. <laughs> it's crazy. It's just crazy, like, overall, you know what I mean? So it's just like... Again, people are gonna find different ways to monetize of some sort. Mm -hmm. Whether they got a scam, whether they gotta, you know, try to do use your work, you know, and try to, you know, influence people to buy a product that they obviously didn't create. You know right. what I'm saying? So it's like, it 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 has that influence on a lot of people, you know, based on what they see. You know what I'm saying on social media. Again, like your worth is your worth at the end of the day. And I don't feel like at any given time, your time should be free, you know what I'm saying? Unless it's a mutual thing where I know it's gonna help both in this situation, it's beneficial, you know what I mean? But aside from that, um, you know, people gotta understand what's, what's beneficial for them, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying, and what works for them. Because a lot of times it's like people wanna get involved and they wanna jump into this, they wanna jump into that. Where, where do you end up, you know what I mean? Like you're not typically focused on one thing. So it's like, yeah, when I started, I was chasing the bag because I was trying to cook the food. I was trying to do the right. shoes. You know, I was trying to do anything at that point. I was working on denim, like, you know, distressing denim, you know, adding zippers to denim, the whole nine. Like, these are things that I was doing way before the sneakers started popping off. Um, excuse me. But once again, once I got the, the kicks off the ground and people started gravitating towards it and I started researching and doing my own thing and... Like as far as trying to see how I can actually get the right supplies. Okay. I'm like, I couldn't reach out to any other customizer without them feeling some type of way. You know right, what I mean? Like right. they weren't just gonna reach out and like, hey, and out, you know, this you, is, for you know what I'm saying? Like, so it's like at the end of the day, they not about to do that, you know what I mean? So I had to take that for what it was and go back into the, you know, research mode and just try to figure out like who the big dogs in the game right now, who's doing what. And um that's how I was able to kinda get all the supplies that I needed, like what type of paint they were using, who were sponsoring these guys, what type of laces, where they were buying the laces from. Um, that's the type of research I did, so that way I didn't have to ask any questions. Right. And I just kind of... So now we... I get, That's nah, perfect segue to jump straight into the... When you started, you started on clothes with denim, but I seen mm -hmm. a lot of like paint splashes. Yeah, it was a what, lot of that. Was this... Because this was trendy at the yeah, time. Yeah, it was super trendy. So he was like, let me just do this. So I felt like I could bring a different twist to it. Like, right. Cause do you ever look... Was, like, I look back at my old work. And like, be like, what the hell was like, I thinking? And not, like, some shit, I'd be like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> the quality is trash, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. But again, it makes you appreciate you know, how, how far you you've come. come because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, like, that's what allowed me to get to where I'm at now. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, in my mind, those were, I mean, granted, I could look at them and say they were fuck-ups, you know what I'm saying? But um, to me personally, I can always look back. I can go back in my archives. Right. You know what and I mean? And kind of just and, and see how far I've come. I can even get inspired by some of the old work that I've done um, and just add a different twist to it. 
uh, and then also just kind of giving it a way cleaner look. Right. You know what I'm saying? So when did you catch yourself changing from, all right, the paint splashes to, I guess, solid <laughs> colors? Because I think after that, I think I seen you was doing the, the Pumas and, and yeah, you had the solid colors. transitioned Puma from like Pumas. The Nike. And then I transitioned, I, tra I went from Pumas and then transitioned into like Air Force Ones. Right. And I started practicing on those. Uh -huh. And I'm like, all right, cool. I started playing around with those, bought a few pairs. Messed a few pairs up, you know what I'm saying? Took a few hours, but again, I had to persuade people that this is what it would be worth. Right. You know? Like, I was charging niggas like 175, 200 out the gate. Damn. So, like, niggas, like, my men and them were looking at me like I was crazy, like, you know what I'm saying? And on some vibe where it was like, okay, cool. This nigga's taxing an arm and a leg. For me, I know my worth. Right. I knew my worth at that point in this time. This is in like, the beginning. This is in the beginning. Yeah. So at some point in time, I was just like, okay, cool. I got to kind of, you know, find some sort of, you know, balance or at least a mid-level to where, okay, we can come to some sort of agreement. Like, at, at that time, it was a lot of, like, a lot of my homies never wanted to pay for it because they didn't see right. what I saw. You know what I'm saying? But That's I'm still trying to get, when did we, so when did this creation of Quartz? It just though, came out of nowhere, but, bro. So did something like, go this viral? Something did that, something, because something, like, something had to happen. And happened. then, you know what, what it was that really started giving me the buzz is like when I started working on the Jordan 3s. Okay. The retro 3s? Yeah. The, the, uh, the matte did, ones? My or? first pair that I did was a pair of, um, I did a pair of 4s. A pair of Salmon Laser 4s. Mm -hmm. They were the Laser 4s that came out. And I ended up doing them like Salmon and Copper. Okay. And at that time, I had gotten a feature with uh, Nice Kicks. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So, like, even with the feature with Nice Kicks, and then a lot of times a paint company would repost my work based off of, like, me using their product. Um, and then just obviously coming with different colors. So, even this, like, you don't have a big following at the time, at this point? Mm-mm. And people still reposting your work. Yeah, I was probably like at like 2,000, 2,500 followers, bro. Damn. So when did and you? And then go? it started creeping like. Yeah, because I'm like, you had like 100 now. Congratulations, like 101. Yeah, nah, I appreciate <laughs> it, bro. Like it that. was like 101. It was like probably 102, you know what I'm saying? But of course, if you're not active on it on a frequent basis or, you know, you tend to nah, lose, yeah, yeah. lose, obviously, followers and stuff like that, which I don't really tend to trip about, obviously, because again, it's just about putting more content out. So that's that's just been your. Your regimen all the time is creating this content. It's creating yeah, content. Yeah, like you gotta be consistent. What's like, the most important part of creating the content? Um, is it just getting it done, or is it getting it done the right way? Because a lot nah, of people say, "I'm gonna just like, get it done." Nah, like, and that's a lot of times. It, it can be a gift and a curse because, again, I tell the person that my typical turnaround time is two months. They will look at me like some people be like, "Hi, right, two months." Like, fuck out of here! Like, <laughs> I'm not about to wait two months, and I'm like, by all means. You, you know want this quality? But me personally, you? you know, I'm working on 20 other pairs. Mm. You know, and I do this by myself. So you can either wait for quality work or, you know, you're more than welcome to go elsewhere. It's endless customizers out here, but there's only one of me. Right. So so what are the, who are some of like the artists that inspires you or the ones that you looked up to? Like, yo, are you, is it any artist that you're chasing? Nah, like, I'm not. I ain't, I ain't never been the chasing type, like. I'm not chasing any artists. I ain't with none of that. Like, me personally, it was just like, I seen a few artists that already had like a main So it's no artist that you look like, man, I'm coming for that nigga spot. Yo, like, I've already felt like, even with the following, like, my, with my work mm -hmm. and what I've done so far, and I don't know cocky shit, but I'm just super confident in terms of my work, obviously, and these guys pay homage to me, hence why I know it's working, you know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. based on what I'm doing, because the same guys that I was looking at back then, and stating like, oh, these guys are pretty dope, they're sick. Like, these guys are the same ones that are liking the pics, that are mm -hmm. paying attention to what I have going on. And if, you know, I used to probably like say a few things or probably, you know, let my emotions kind of play over everything and spaz every now and then. And then I'll have a few of those customizers that'll reach out, like, shout out to Mox, uh, to he actually, um, he actually is one of the dope, like a, like a dope customizer, obviously, that's been in the game for over like 15 years. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Which, you know, I've learned that over time, obviously, just doing research. Um, but he was one of those guys that obviously early on in the game, he always just kind of like, you know, just kind of do what you're doing, bro. Like, you're doing the right thing. Don't let these guys get, you know, knock you off your pivot. You know what I'm saying? Like, don't let them, you know, allow you to lose your focus. Um, you know, you got something good going, you know what I mean, type of vibe. So. You know, obviously, like, him, of course. And then there's a few other customizers that... I don't remember all their IGs off the top of my head, obviously. But, 
and I pay homage and show a lot of love to you know certain ones that I respect. Mm -hmm. um, mainly just off of quality work. Like if your work don't look presentable to me, or if it's you know in my eyes like I wouldn't buy it, then I wouldn't. You know what I'm saying? Like I don't really care for it. Like I appreciate the effort. You know what I'm saying? And I appreciate everyone's artistry, but I don't care for everyone's work. Right. So let's talk about the logo. Like when did you come the up logo? with it? How, how, how far <laughs> in were you with customizing when you was like, I want to create this logo and we're going we gonna to go full throttle, we're going 100% with just this? Um, see, that logo, honestly, I had when I was in college. Okay. That logo. So it sounded like you just was like, you was it's already like set up from the jump. Like, like it wasn't right. like, I'm going to start, I'm going to take this serious. Then it was like, shit, before you even was... It was Hi. like, any, it, honestly, like nothing was planned. You feel what I'm saying? But it's just like the way things kind of mapped out on its own. Because again, like I knew I was always working for companies. Like I, my first job in Miami was working at Ralph Lauren. Mm. I worked at Ralph Lauren for four years. And then once, you know, I stopped working at Ralph Lauren, I, which I got terminated from there too, because at some point in time, like it was just like I was spending a lot of money, obviously. And these guys are pretty much just, you know, on some abusing your employee discount and <laughs> granted they were obviously allowing me to buy the product mm -hmm. um and try to just use that against me at that point so i just kind of at that point in time i was just more so trying to figure out you know transitioning from being stuck or being at a standstill with one company for such a long time um trying to figure out like okay what's your next move um and always trying to have like always having these challenges like i was just bouncing from one job to one job to the next job to the next to the next like even to the point where I was actually um, a precious metal broker. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, What the hell is that, though? I like, mean, obviously, um, it was dealing with uh, precious metals such as, you know, platinum, gold, okay. silver, palladium. All right, all right. You know what I mean? So, hey, I'm dumb. Much, I'm a, if I don't know something, I'm going to ask. Nah, it's so good. And I appreciate it because, again, mm. I didn't know anything about it. One of my homies in college, Breezy, actually put me on. Um, at that time, I was looking for a job. You know what I mean? And then I was tired of what I was getting compensated and then. More so just the conversation being young and then those conversations like, yo, bro, I just made 15K or I just made 7K off of just one client based off of this trade on, you know, on, on a stock market or whatever Man. the case was. You know what I'm saying? Like you I pretty much like had to watch. Right <laughs> I mean, and they make a lot of bread, obviously, but it's super stressful at that. You got to make a, a lot of calls based on the leads that you have. Um, and that you deal with overall, but I did that for probably like a month or, or two exactly. and just kind of like, it's not for so me. So when did you, when did you was like, all right, I don't need a job, i just take this? I transitioned and came back home. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like back in 2013, I want to say, I ended up just saying, fuck Miami at that point in time, I'm about to just go back home, spend some time with the family because I had already been gone for about a good six years at that time. And then once you came home, you ain't working? And once I came home, now I, had, I had found a job here. Um, I had worked at Saks at that point in time, and then I was trying to go back to school for my master's in Miami, hence why I transferred back to Saks in Miami. Um, and then I ended up just like, that didn't work out. Uh, so I was like, you know what, fuck it. Let me just shoot back to the crib and just make some shit shake. You know what I'm saying? Like, you at that time, I was shake. like 24, 25. So I ain't got no choice but to figure shit out. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. in my mind, I'm like, oh, at 25, I'm trying to be rich. You right. know what I'm saying? And I'm That's approaching 25. Mind. You know what I'm saying? And I'm like, <laughs> I'm nah, I'm rich. I don't have the bread that I want. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, so, yeah. Those dreams, young. Like by the time I turn thirty, I want to be, uh, I want to be yeah. married, have a girl, pregnant. I'm telling kids. you, like exactly. And I'm thirty, no kids. You now feel what we saying? find like, out what like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you feel the same. What we thought it was. <laughs> <laughs> This is real life. <laughs> Niggas have real life dreams. Right, right. Like, like, I thought y'all want to be this. Man, you got to get your fuck up. Then it's like, <laughs> man, that's not how life works. That ain't how it work at all, nigga. So, does. yo, so uh, the shoes you got on, right? These mm -hmm. are are these your Custom. shoes all the way yeah. or customs? These nah, these are actually Y threes. Okay. Um, see, I'm not a sneakerhead. Nah, it's all good. Don't worry. Um, my shoes coming soon. Okay. My so why why threes is Yeezy, Yoji I, Yamamoto? Oh, see, I have no idea. So it's a Japanese it designer. Okay. Um, and he actually has been in collaboration with with uh, Adidas for some years now. They've had this line Y three. Okay. It's been out for quite some time. I seen you do a couple of these though. Or yeah, I've done a few of them. Well, probably this is only like my third pair that I've done. Okay. Um, two for myself, obviously, and then one for a client. Oh no, I like it. So what, I appreciate that. With the um, with the shoe design, you was is another thing, like you've been working with a lot of uh other. Nah, I'm sorry. Nah, it's good. With a lot of other brands like Excuse Adidas, me. I seen yeah. you do something with um, Shoe City too, yeah. as well. 
uh, how was that? Like, how did you get into? Did they just reach out to you because you was lit? No, nah, I mean, at some point in time, like early on, when I started doing, you know, the customs and started becoming more noticed, I want to say in the DMV area. Like, I know a lot of people obviously in the DMV because I done went to schools in you know all different areas, but um, a lot of times it was more so like uh, people obviously in the area started gravitating towards the work, and once they did, I had uh, people like Pat is dope. Um, reach out, out to me, you know. Shout out to Pat. Oh, a lot dope. of sneaker reviews. Uh, he dope. definitely uh, reached out to me. He was one of the first actually that reached out to me um, to give me kind of like a, my first play. You know what I mean? With, with one of these sneaker stores and you know uh, more so brand rep. You know at that point in time um, for that event. But it was like an in-store event that we've always had in co- uh, in coalition with you know Shoe City. Mm-hmm. Um, but um, pretty much at that point in time, once he plugged me in, you know they started calling me. Like a few times down the line. So from then it was uh from then it was you working with Adidas like directly? Or well not nah, it wasn't, it was through Shoe City. Okay. Uh, yeah, every everything as far as like those those brands so far outside of like Under Armour, um, that I worked with, uh and you know, Nordstrom mm-hmm. events that I've done of that nature. Excuse me. Uh you know, Nordstrom, uh who else? Did a work, a lot of work with a lot. Of I've done a lot of workshops. So is this something like let's talk about because a lot of people work hard, right? Right, right, but right. Not too many people work smart and hard. Right. So like, are these relationships that you built and you was like, I'm gonna connect the dots like this, and because I have this connect, I'm gonna reach out, or did they strictly reach out to you? Nah, a lot of times like with with a lot of these companies or like Nordstrom, they reached out based off one of my homies, Josh. You know, shout out to my boy Josh. He uh, is actually one of my brand managers. Um, for the Absence brand, okay. uh, he's actually based out in Boston, so he used to work for Shoe City um, on their on their brand and the marketing team. Okay, um, and we actually connected through the you know activations that I do, used to do with them in store. Um, but did you reach out to Josh? I'm like, yo, can you see if? Yeah, Nordstrom? well, see, Josh ended up reaching out to me. Oh, okay. Because um, he seen that I was doing a tour. Like at one point in time, I was just like, all right, cool. I'm gonna customize these sneakers. I have so many people. Like the following started growing, so. Once the following started growing, it was just like, all right, cool. I'm going to go ahead and see if I can, you know, at least try to start a tour, you mm-hmm. know, customizing sneakers, teaching individuals how to customize. Um, at that time, it was just like, I did the first one here in the DMV. Great turnout. Mm-hmm. And then he reached out to me. He was like, yo, bro, if you ever need any help, you know what I'm saying? If you need somebody to, you know, sponsor, feel free to let us know. Like, we'll try to work something out. So I'm like, all right, say no more. Let's go ahead and line it up. Let's see if you can comp some sneakers out for me. And uh, see if we can get some marketing going. Whatever whatever workshop I have, I throw y'all on the flyer, you know, cross promo. Y'all promote it for me. I promote it on my end. And that's how we was working. So with the tours, is like just you teaching people how to do the, the designs on the The same sneakers. thing that I do. So um, that right there, right? Of course, I mean, I'm assuming it will I mean, bring granted, revenue. we all over the place. But, you know, everything pretty much just kind of trickles down to how everything kind of... No, it's kind of the same. That's why, but I'm saying, why do people... I was wondering... Okay, this is what you do now. I'm gonna teach you how to do it. But don't that take money out of your pockets? I mean, I'm That's not, I'm not really, I don't, I'm not threatened by that though. You know what I'm saying? Like, I feel like me personally, like I know what I have to offer. You know what I mean? Like, no one has my vision, <laughs> straight up. Like, I'm, I'm me. You know what I'm saying? Right. So it's like, like no one's gonna see certain things like how I see it. You know what I'm saying? And I can't force people to see things how I see it. You know what I mean? So all I can do is do it, mm-hmm. put it out on the on the platform. And it, allow, and it allows people to gravitate towards it. No, nah, that's smart. You know and saying? I don't think it's all over the place at all. I think it's still lined in this one. No, 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 for sure. Vision. Yeah, so like I, don't, sure. I definitely don't think it's all over the place. So this absence brand, mm-hmm. well, how did that start? The absence started, like I had the idea of starting it back when I was in, like this is my last year in college. Mm-hmm. But at, you know, obviously working for working retail, you around clothes all the time. You know, you typically inspired by what they got going on. Um, and I was just like, you know what, let me try to figure out if I can make a line on my own, mm. do my own thing, you know what I'm saying? Like, So at that point, I was just like, you know, um, I had a brand called Soy. This that was I wanted before to start. Absence. Yeah, like, okay. this is the name that I came up with. All uh, right. Excuse me, you know, stay with the bliss decks on deck. It's all good, um, bro. So I had a brand called Soy, and um, it was pretty much style on you. Uh, and it was based off a project that I had did in, in, in one of my classes back in college. Because um, everything was always related around fashion and like my personal style and the companies that I've worked for, just to make things much more relatable on my end, uh, easier to explain, easier to talk about amongst you know the people um, or amongst my peers that that I was involved with a lot around that time. So 
uh, absence came about, honestly, I want to say back in 2017. Like 2017 is when I officially said like, okay, cool. This is the name of the brand, like absence. You know what I mean? Like I had the brain implemented because I had the logo where it was just, the brain was just, was non-existent. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So it was just pretty much the frame of the body. So what does that mean though? Like The frame of the body was pretty much a silhouette mm -hmm. of a mannequin that I had pretty much, uh, that I, when I was working visuals obviously in store, um, I had pretty much dressed that mannequin and I had took a picture of it. But I had my friend, you know, Kimmy, shout out my best friend, Kimmy. Um, you know, we were going to college out there. She was going to school for, for graphic design. And um, we went out there and I had explained to her, like, listen, this is what I want. Mm -hmm. And she was able to create, you know, the logo for me. I had used it for my portfolio in college, just the frame of the body itself. Right. Um, so I always had the body there, but I was just like, you know what? I didn't want to put a face to it. I didn't really have anything else in mind. And I'm just like, you know what? I'm going to put a brain right there. But what made you put that? It was just the brain was just more so like it's the creative thought process that I go through on a day to day basis. You know what I mean? Like to create the content that I create, makes sense. Um, and to produce a lot of the content that I you know you know create, obviously for the most part. So um, I had the idea for the brain, and I, t I reached out to one of my boys, Zach. Um, he was going to school for photography at that point in time. You know, from New York, uh, white kid was super dope, super talented. Uh, so I had reached out to him, like, it was Zach. I was like, I have this logo right here, bro, but I need a brain, like, added to this of some sort. You know what I mean? Right. Like, I'm like, I don't, I don't want a face. I don't want nothing. Like, my, I had my brother sketch it out for me. My brother, he's draw, he draws as well. Shout out my bro, Pat. You can, you know, he's, you can find him on IG as well as PA Lunchout. PA underscore Lunchout. Um, he has a lot of dope work, too. So a lot of times I go to him, you know, for a lot of, like, pre-sketches or... Like, if I have something in mind, I tell him, like, yo, Pat, go ahead and draw this out for me because I know he could bring it to life. You right. know what I mean? So I went to him. He, he sketched it out. And then I had went to Zach, and I'm like, yo, this is what I need. Because I knew he, he knew he understood the programs on the computer. And he had all the programs that we needed to, you know, create that. So he did it for me. And I'm like, once I did it, I'm like, all right, cool. I'm going to just throw this in my profile pic. So nah, nah. And I left it there. That shit, but I like you know it. Like, mean, it, like it, it, it like, like and I'm, I was thinking some way deeper thought than all right, I had the mannequin and then I nah, wanted the brain. Was just, I that's was where, that's where it stemmed from, but right. it's really me. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. the the posture and everything of it. Hence why I took a picture of that mannequin because right. of, like the posture just, and everything so, of it. It was just like that was like my normal stance of. If I was to take a pic, and it was just so funny and ironic how that, you know, how it worked out. Sometimes things just so it's just like when I seen it, I'm just like, okay, that can play off as me, but I don't want to put my face to it. I get it. You know, I get so it. instead I get of me it. putting my face on that to just make it all about me, I'll put a brain. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? No, and then sense. just kind of let people. Then when they they ask questions as far as like, what is a brain for? Well, it was it wasn't present before. You know what I mean? And I'm pretty much bringing forth what I don't see out on the main market. You know makes what I mean? Sense, Hence sense. why, you know, I created Absence as just a line. Um, so everything I do produce, you don't see it. Right. You know what I mean? Like, it's nothing that's been done. So speaking of that, right, just recently a uh, situation happened when you think uh, you, you made a design or a colorway mm -hmm. and then Nike make the same colorway. Right. You post it and you say, look, I mean... We don't need. There's no need to do that. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. if, if you like my color, just reach out. <laughs> right. Do you think is? Do you think they? Is this something that you really think? Are they saw your shit and they're like, nah? I'm yeah, of course. Because you got to look at the time and like, first off, like I'm not knocking them. I ain't bashing them. And the reason why I approached the situation the way I did, like, and try to make humor out of it, mm -hmm. as opposed to like direct that oh fuck Nike this and then the third, like it wasn't about that. Um, because again, it's not the brand itself you know mm -hmm. what i'm saying it's clearly a creative Somebody or someone that's the brand. in the office right that's literally on social media mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying like there's people that have jobs specifically for that um that are on social media all day just gathering up and you know soaking up inspiration um i'm not gonna sit here and say like that colorway for sure for sure was inspired by a custom that I did. So did anybody reach out to you about this? Nah. No? Nah. I mean, I honestly, like I said, like I'm not expecting, or I wasn't expecting for Nike to reach out just based off of that post or anything like that. Like, mm -hmm. But I just obviously put it out there just to bring forth awareness. Like, listen, we see you. Like, whoever you are representing Nike, I see you. You know what I mean? Like, because it's just like, it, how ironic. Like, there's so what no now, such though? thing as a coincidence. Nah, yeah, I, when you said it, it was like no such thing as a coincidence. They had to see it. 
But like, what, yeah, what now? Now, now you got. So now it's like, okay, cool. Like, I'm not here to say, okay, I want a crazy sneaker deal with Nike. I don't, you know, I'm not sitting here. Speaking but even like, past that, though, like, like, even if they don't reach out to you, like, what now for? Not for for me and the brand. For Juanito, yeah, and for it's Ascension focusing for, on the shoot. Creating my first silhouette. Okay. Like my actual shoot and my brand. Um, where I actually would have a product line of my own sneakers that I designed personally um, with the help of probably like a friend of mine that's also another designer. Um, but he he does a lot of sketching and a lot of drawing. So, you know, I pretty much bring my ideas to him. He applies it on paper. We get it done that way. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. um, that'll be an interesting process because I'm sure a lot of other designers, they sit there, draw it out to the T, front, back, like, I don't draw, but I got a hell of a vision. Right. And I, I'm just going to, I'm going to do it a little different as opposed to how everyone else is doing it. Um, to show people that you can do it, like in the, in the manner in which I did it and how I approached the situation. So um, I'm going to Italy at the end of the month uh, to actually go sourcing mm -hmm. um, at a few different factories. Um, my mentor, actually, she's going to be taking a trip out there for about two weeks or so. So she invited me to come out there, which I'll be doing that like the 28th through maybe like the 6th um, so that'd be giving me enough time to really go out there and soak up a lot of information and knowledge and what I need to learn and what I need to do moving forward as far as producing my shoe no I think it's gonna be dope man I uh, appreciate you for coming out bro, nah, it's, thank uh, you, bro. it's Father's Day man you could have been thank anywhere you. else you nah for sure it pops at church right now yeah. so I ain't even worried so, you feel me you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I definitely appreciate you bro I think we nah, touched on everything man we, really uh, did. we, we touched on a lot uh Hopefully, you get your sneaker out. Yeah, no, for sure. It's coming. How can uh, people put orders in? Uh, how much, like, do you have a um, set as price? Of, as of right now, um, I'm pretty much, like, kind of blocked on orders. Mm -hmm. Like, kind of tied off on orders right now because I'm finishing a lot of prior projects that I had in. And on top of that, I have so many different things coming at me uh, at, at, at once. So, what's your price um, for your shoes? Price range starting off at 300 Okay. Um, pretty much practically paying for a brand new shoe. Okay. But it's a one of one. It's a one of one design that I don't that I won't duplicate for anyone else. So, so what's the um, what's the difference between a three hundred dollars shoes and I guess like a five hundred dollars shoe that you? Well, five hundred dollars shoe, I typically charge five hundred for all hype beast sneakers, okay. any designer sneakers. All right. Because a lot of times it's like these guys are willing to go out there and pay six, seven hundred dollars for. A pair of plain Jane off whites. I'm giving you a one of one colorway that no one else has. You know what I'm saying? Like they'll right. bitch at me for for charging like a couple hundred dollars extra on what they paid for. Do you got a favorite uh, pet. a favorite design that you did personally? Uh, personally, personally, uh, my camo Air Force Ones that I did for Young Dolph. Mm. Yeah, that was probably like my. Did, did he post it and tag you? Yeah, he didn't tag me, which I ain't really care for that. He but said everything once. That shit don't get the caption said enough. But that, that don't get you tight. Like nah, how many, no. how many people like, that no. have you made this? Yo, people for? get tight. Like people get tight. I, it's been so many. I, it's a great feeling when you see an artist actually wear your product. But it's like for me, I don't know. Like I don't get driven or I don't. You know what I'm saying? I don't hype myself off of these artists just tagging me. Like if they tag me, by all means, it works out ten times better for you. Right. But when you have a core following and a strong following, they like know. they, they do all the tagging. Yeah, they see. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like they flood the comments. Like, so what else you did? Shoot this dog. Um, I did Young Dolph. I've done the baby. Uh, Thanks, shout out to my brother. He actually was able to finesse the Stewie mm -hmm. character on the side of the shoes for me and the baby logo on the side. Um, my brother, Pat, he actually got that out the way for me. Um, I just did the colorway base, obviously, and then just added the extra little additives on there. Um, who else? We did Young Dog, the baby, DJ Khaled, Davies. Um, I seen you did the sign for Davies. We did, who else? You did Mad. Julio yeah. Jones. Um, your favorite one was the dog one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because I did that honestly in less than 24 hours. But you know, now how mean? did you and link up like, with these dudes? You just go out like somebody tell nah, you to like, play, like. Sometimes I just be I, I pay attention. Sometimes when they come into town, and they be like, all right, cool. This right here, I could kind of capitalize off of this because I'm getting a pair of Air Force Ones. Have you ever so, made something for somebody and not and wasn't able to link with them? No. Nah. Okay. No. Nah. I'm right. like 10 for 10 in it right now. So we yeah, listen, man. <laughs> I'm 10 for 10 in it. You got way more followers than me, but still, to my followers, let the nah, people know what they follow good, me. Nah, man. You can follow me uh, on my personal page at Quanito, Q-U-O-N-I-T-O. Um, you can also follow the Absence page, which is uh, Absence, A-B-S-N-C-E underscore. Um, you know, pretty much that's where I post between both. I don't control the absence page, so if you are talking to me on that page, it's not me. He full so don't of shit. Get he mad at me. He don't, <laughs> want you, don't get mad. He don't want nobody to um, But I, I literally I answer everybody and try to respond to everybody on my personal page, which is Juanito 
Um, again, it's just a lot that comes at me at one time, so I can't always, you know, respond to everybody within a timely manner in which they, you know, would want. Mm -hmm. um, but I try my best to at least get to it. Uh, if it's something that I feel as though is not conducive for what I want to do moving forward in my in, in my career, mm -hmm. um, nothing personal, but I'd rather not, you know what I'm saying, take those type of orders. I get it, man. I even had that stress, but Already. You know, shout out Jay Hill, shout out the whole family. Appreciate you, my um, dog. I appreciate y'all for having me out here. Shout out my photographers, my videographers on deck. I appreciate you fellas. Tez, right? Mm -hmm. Tez, Tez, your name, boss, man? Yes. Joseph. Joseph, shout out Tez and Joseph. I had to get their names real quick just to shout out to the whole gang, man. You shout already know, man. Carnito, J Hill. Let's get you know this straight. Appreciate it. Surprise.